Happy Wednesday, Christian brothers and sisters. If you thought last week's chapter was a little bit weird, this week's chapter is just as weird. It's another vision. And so Daniel is seeing some crazy things once again, but I'm here to help. I'm going to give you that historical background needed so that you know exactly what you're seeing and why. Chapter 8 of the book of Daniel, in 10 minutes or less, entitled A Ram, A Goat, and Gabriel. Gabriel might ring a bell. Gabriel is an angel. Gabriel appears to Mary, for example, and announces to her that she is pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit overshadowing her. And so Gabriel is one of those interesting characters in the pages of the Bible because he shows up both in the Old Testament here and in the New Testament. He seems to be one of the main messengers that God uses to share his word in big time announcements with his people on this earth. So Gabriel makes an appearance here in chapter eight. A little bit of a review and then an introduction to the chapter that you're gonna read here. Just like last time, I wanna mention one more time Visions are symbolic. Visions represent something else. Visions use figurative language. Daniel actually does see these things, but these things aren't real. It's like a dream. They stand for something else. And luckily for us, the Bible does an excellent job of describing exactly what they represent. So just keep that in mind as you read through Daniel chapter 8. In Daniel chapter 7, remember that the vision was about four beasts. These four beasts represented the four kingdoms that were going to rule in, in succession over God's people, Israel. Babylon first, then Persia, then Greece, and then finally Rome. With that in mind, Daniel chapter 8 focuses on the two middle kingdoms, Persia and Greece, and gets a little more specific on what's going to happen with these two kingdoms. And so if you've already gone through chapter 7, chapter 8 should be a little bit easier because now you have in mind these two kingdoms already. Now it's just a, a close-up, focusing in on these two. As you read through chapter 8, this is what you want to watch for. You have the vision, but then Gabriel gives an extended, detailed explanation of what this vision means. That's what's nice about Daniel chapter 8. Gabriel connects the dots for Daniel, and in doing so, he connects the dots for us. The first beast or animal in this particular vision is a ram with two horns. The Medes and the Persians are represented by the ram with two horns. They were united under one ruler. His name is Cyrus. Sometimes he's called Darius. There is a little bit of a debate whether these two names represent the same guy, but I, I think it's safe to say that they do. One is his Median name. One is his Persian name. The same guy ruling over these two empires, and eventually it just becomes the Persian Empire. The next animal that comes along in this vision is a goat with a large horn. This is the Greek Empire. It has a large horn, and in the vision you're going to see that the goat completely demolishes the ram because that's what happens in history. Alexander the Great, to this large horn, flies across the earth and destroys everything in his path. Unfortunately, Alexander the Great dies when he is young, and his kingdom is divided between his four commanders. He doesn't have a son left to hand over the empire to, and so it's kind of divided out in these different ways to these four commanders. That's why the goat with the large horn has four other horns that come up. There's an interesting part of this particular vision near the end of the section with the goat with the large horn. Another little small horn comes up, but then it grows in power. It's a king from the dynasty of Greece. 
expands towards the beautiful land. The beautiful land in this case is going to be the land of Israel because this is what all of these visions really focus on. God's people in the land of Israel. What's going to happen to them in the future, in the centuries to come? So the beautiful land is God's promised land. This small horn sets itself up against the prince of armies, capital P prince. This is the Lord. This is the one true God. The small horn also takes away daily sacrifice and desecrates the sanctuary of the Lord. The horn prospers. The truth is trampled. And finally, it's going to be destroyed, but not by human power, the vision says in verse 25. We add all of these things up, and this small horn is going to lead us to a man named Antiochus IV Epiphanes. I know it's a weird name, but it's a real name. This guy actually existed. He was one of the rulers of the section that was north of Israel geographically. And this guy, this ruler, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, and completely overran the Israelites. And then finally in 167 BC, God's temple is desecrated. He sets up false altars in there. He ransacks the city. And this is what is, is really being predicted here in Daniel chapter 8. What is the main point, though, of the chapter with all these crazy details that are flying around? There was more spiritual devastation for the Israelites to come on the horizon. But even that spiritual devastation would one day come to an end. Yeah, the Lord wants to predict the future. He wants to show his people that not only does he know what's coming, but he has already planned for it. But he also wants to comfort the Israelites that this is not going to last forever. Even this too will come to an end. And of course, that's going to have a lot to do with why we are reading this particular chapter. You know, God doesn't promise you a pleasant existence on this earth either. But he does promise that regardless of the hardships that you will see, regardless of the problems that you're going to go through, regardless of the pain that you're going to have to feel, he is going to see you through to the end. He's going to be with you every step of the way. He's going to make sure that you are not overloaded with more than you can bear. And he is going to get you through. He's going to get you through to heaven, just like he promises, no matter what you have to go through on this earth. I hope this helps you navigate the waters here again in Daniel chapter 8. And now it's time to read it on your own. It doesn't really matter to me what translation, translation you're using. You're going to have differences and pros and cons in each one. But if you do come across something, if there's a word or a phrase that seems to be a little bit confusing, that's why I have my email there at the bottom of the screen. Please do not hesitate to contact me, and I'll help you in any way I can. There's your review. That's the reader's guide for Daniel's chap Daniel chapter 8. It is less than 10 minutes. It'll give you a nice start into reading this week. I hope you have a great time reading and can join us next week for Daniel chapter 9 as we continue through this excellent prophecy of Old Testament times. Have a good day.